the first human being who formulated the tactics of subversion was a Chinese philosopher by the name of Sun Tzu. And he said, after long meditation, that to implement foreign, uh, to implement state policy in a warlike manner, it's the most counterproductive, barbaric, and inefficient to fight on a battlefield. You know that war is continuation of state policy, right? So if you want successfully to implement your state policy, and you start fighting, this is the most idiotic way to do it. The highest art of warfare is not to fight at all, but to subvert anything of value in the country of your enemy until such time that the perception of reality of your enemy is screwed up to such an extent that he does not perceive you as an enemy and that your system, your civilization and your ambitions look to your enemy as an alternative, if not desirable, then at least feasible. Better red than dead. That's the ultimate purpose the final stage of subversion, after which you can simply take your enemy without a single shot being fired, if the subversion is successful. This is basically what subversion is. What subversion is? Basically, it consists of four periods, time-wise. If we start from here and go this way, time, right? This is the beginning point. The first stage of subversion is the process which is called, basically, demoralization says for itself what it is. It takes from, um, say, 15 to 20 years to demoralize a society. Why, why 15 or 20 years? This is the time sufficient to educate one generation of students or children. One generation, one lifetime span of a person, a human being, which is dedicated to study, to shaping up the outlook, ideology, personality. No more, no less. Usually it takes from 15 to 20 years. What it includes? It includes influencing, or by various methods, infiltration, uh, propaganda methods, direct contacts, doesn't really matter. I will describe them later. <laughs> of various areas where public opinion is formulated or shaped. Religion, educational system, social life, administration, law enforcement system. Some, sometimes when I describe all the methods, uh, students ask me question, are you sure this is the result of the Soviet influence? Not necessarily. You see, the tactic of subversion about which I'm talking is similar to the martial art, the Japanese martial art. If, you're, if some of you are familiar with that tactic, probably you will remember that if an enemy is bigger and heavier than yourself, it would be very painful to resist his direct strike. If a heavier person wants to strike me in the face, it would be very naive and counterproductive to stop his blow. The Chinese and Japanese judo art tells us what to do. First to avoid the strike, then to grab the fist and continue his movement in the direction where it was before. Right? Until the enemy crashes in the wall. You see? So, what happens here? The target country obviously does something wrong. If it's a free democratic society, there are many different movements within the society. There obviously in every society there are people who are against the society. They may be simple criminals, ideologically in disagreement with the, with the state policy, conscientious enemies, simply psychotic personalities who are against anything. Right? And finally, there are a small group of agents of a foreign nation, bought, subverted, recruited, right? The moment all these movements 
will be directed in one direction, right? This is the time to catch that movement and to continue it until the movement forces the whole society into collapse, into crisis, right? So that's exactly the martial art tactic. We don't stop an enemy. We let him go. We help him to go in the direction we want them to go, okay? These are the areas of application of subversion. What it means exactly? <clears throat> In case of religion, destroy it, ridicule it, replace it with various sects, cults, which bring people's attention, faith, whether it is naive, primitive, doesn't really matter. As long as the basically accepted religious dogma is being slowly eroded and taken away from the supreme purpose of religion, to keep people in touch with, with the supreme being, that serves the purpose. Therefore, replace it, accept it, respect it, religious organizations with fake organizations. Distract people's attention from the real faith and attract them to various different faiths. Education. Distract them from learning something which is constructive, pragmatic, efficient. Instead of mathematics, physics, foreign languages, chemistry, teach them history of urban warfare, natural food, uh, <laughs> home economy, your sexuality, anything, as long as it takes you away. Okay? Uh, social life. Replace traditionally established institutions and organizations with fake organizations. Take away the initiative from people. Take away the responsibility from naturally established links between individuals, group of individuals, and society at large, and replace them with artificially, bureaucratically controlled bodies. Instead of social life and friendship between neighbors, establish social workers institutions. A people who are on payroll of whom? Society? No. Bureaucracy. Power structure. Okay, the natural bodies of administration, which are traditionally either elected by, by people at large or appointed by elected leaders of society, are being actively substituted by artificial bodies. The bodies of people, groups of people, whom nobody elected, never, as a matter of fact, most of the people don't like them at all, and yet they exist. One of such group is media. Who elected them? <laughs> how come, how come they, they, pay, they, they, they have so much power? Almost monopolistic power on your mind. They can rape your mind. But who elected them? How come they are, they have a nerve to decide what is good and what is bad for, for the elected by you, President and, and his administration? Who the hell are they? Power structure slowly uh, is eroded by the bodies and groups of people who do not have neither qualification nor the will of people to keep them in power, and yet they do have power. The next step is destabilization. Again, this word says for itself what it is. To destabilize all the relations, all the accepted institutions and organizations in a country of your enemy. How you do it? You don't have to send a, a battalion of KGB agents to blow up bridges. No. You let them do it themselves. Here it's radicalization. On, this, on the stage of destabilization, we cannot come to compromise even within a family. The husband and wife couldn't figure out which is better. Husband wants his kids to eat at the table and wife wants him a child to roam around the room and, and drop food all over the floor. They cannot come to compromise unless they start a fight. It's impossible to reach a compromise, constructive compromise between neighbors. This stabilization process usually leads directly to the process of crisis. In case of developing nations, that's the area where I, I was active. The process starts
when when the legitimate bodies of power the social structure collapse it's, it cannot function anymore so instead we have artificial body injected into society such as non elected committees you remember i was talking about them here social workers who are not elected by people media who self, who are self appointed rulers of your opinion uh some strange groups uh, which claim that they know how to lead society forward they don't usually all they care is how to collect the nations and and from and sell their own concocted ideology mixture of religion and ideology here we have all this artificial body claiming power if the power is denied to them they take it by force in case of iran for example all of a sudden we have revolutionary committees who what what kind of revolution there was no revolution yet and yet they had the committees they were taking power of of judgment they had they had the power of execution they had the power of of uh, le legislation and that they had the power of of uh, judicial uh, all of them combined in one person who is half baked intellectual sometimes graduated from harvard university or or berkeley he comes back to his country and then he he thinks that he he knows the answer to all the social economical problems okay crisis is when society cannot function any more productively it collapses obviously that's the, the word for crisis could be stopped right here both as an expert and as an import and that takes one step one very important thing to do you don't have to expel all the KGB agents from Washington DC. The most difficult and at the same time the simplest answer to the subversion is to start it here and even before by bringing back the society to religion, something that you cannot touch and eat and put on yourself, but something that rules society and makes it move and preserve it. So the answer to ideological subversion strangely enough is very simple you don't have to shoot people you don't have to aim mi missiles and pershings and cruise missiles at Andropov's headquarters you simply have to have faith and prevent subversion in other words not to be a victim of subversion don't try to be a person who in judo is trying to smash your enemy and being caught by your hand. Don't strike like that. Strike with the power of your spirit and moral superiority. If you don't have that power, it's high time to develop it. And that's the only answer.